This is Boston Chris with another great episode of the ETX Rock Show. Louise here. The Descript. Featuring all genres and styles of entertainment. And what we do call the ETX Rock. Let's hear from Louise, please. From the unheralded and unheard to the legends and beyond. Out of the box. <laughs> ETX Rock. It's awesome. We keep them coming. Five dollars. That's pocket check. Well, hey, y'all. This is Haley McDaniel. Are y'all ready for this? ETX Rock Show is the greatest show of all time. Okay. We are ETX Rocks. The ETX Rock Show is the best show of all time, say? The other shows, you're good, you're real good. As long as we're around, you'll be second best, say? Cut! Hey, y'all, this is Caitlin Butts, and thanks for listening to the ETX Rock Show. This is important, so grab a pin. We are mobile audio and video productions serving East Texas and surrounding areas. We're running a special for electronic press kits, also known as promos or EPKs. For 496 bucks, with everything included, we will come to your location, film and record your band's live performance, interview band members, then create a professional package with graphics and effects delivered to you in the digital format of your choice, ready to be uploaded to your band's website, Facebook page, or YouTube channel. The packages we prepare can also be pretty valuable tools to send to venues, booking agents, or promoters, even record labels. You take your band seriously, make sure the world does too. Here's our number, 903-738-3881. Check out mobileaudiolabs.com. Find us on Facebook, Mobile Audio and Video Productions. Hey guys, Boston Chris here with another episode of Behind the Music with Boston Chris, only found here on the ETX Rock Show. And uh, we have a huge treat for you guys today. This was supposed to be just with Walter Lee, uh, Rocket Queen, but Jay came as well, and he was supposed to be retired, um, but apparently I heard wrong, and he's just tired. Um, now he's not so tired, he's back, so uh, we have Walter and Jay from Rocket Queen, a huge band in, in the Tyler area here in East Texas, uh, been around for, man, like, what, 14 years now? Yeah, it seems that long. Yeah, 20, that long. 2003, 2003, right? And um, I, I guess the first question I, I really got to know is because, I mean, the first time I really heard you guys was with the I Hate You video, mm -hmm. um, which is just a phenomenal video that you guys should check out on YouTube if you haven't already. Um, but what I love about you guys' the sound is, is, especially once I got the record, um, is each song is almost like a different genre within itself. And I, I, the first question I would really like to hear from you guys is what were some of your in influences? Because I hear a lot of that late 80s kind of vibe in, in your sound a lot of times. Well, it's uh, it's weird because when we first started, we were very much, back in 2003, there wasn't a lot of like this 80s revival that's right. going around. So but that's actually what we were trying to do. We were trying to bring back a little bit more of the uh, good time rock and roll where everybody's having a, having a fun time. Everybody was just staring at their shoes and and you know just playing songs not really entertaining anybody and we wanted to get up there and entertain people and have a good time and, and there was a lot of that the cookie cutter kind of rock back in the yeah there really wasn't a lot of rock at all it was yeah. all you know it Poppy. was all pop yeah. and there was not a lot of guitars and you know kind of sounds familiar for now but right you know um, yeah, it's kind of trending back that way unfortunately yeah. But uh, so yeah, it, it started out with a with a lot of 80s influence and we kind of evolved into you know, hopefully our own sound and just kind of, we just, you know, obviously lyrically we pull from our own experiences and right. musically it's just, I don't know, it's just kind of whatever we're into at the time. Right. Know, whatever we're kind of listening to has a little bit of an, a, an effect, but not a lot. Right. And I mean, one thing that makes me such a big fan of Rocket Queen is, I mean, anytime we go to a Rocket Queen show, I mean, it's a high energy show. There's a lot of power behind what y'all do. I mean, yeah. I want... The, one of the times I went and saw y'all at Clicks, I mean, you fell off the stage. And, I mean, Walter's we there. About that the other night. We were, I mean, Walter's there, and then Walter's gone, but it, it you never stopped performing. You never stopped entertaining. Yeah, I think I literally almost died that night. <laughs> doesn't so, surprise me. It was a long drop, and there was a lot of stuff that could have just, like, impaled me for, <laughs> forever. But luckily, I didn't. You know, it was weird. I've never done that at Clicks. So, I mean, how do you get yourself so amped up to give that high energy show every single time? It's just natural. Like, that's just that's just what, we, what we've what we always done. So you just start feeling those guitars feed back in. And the... So, I mean, you guys... If it just... doesn't move you, then we're doing something wrong. And as you guys are kind of getting ready for it, um, you know, 
you're setting up your equipment, you're setting up the drums and the sound and all of that. Do you feel you just get more and more amped? Not that really. First note? No, it's it's pretty much right before we go on. Like we're we're usually either backstage or you know right behind our amps, putting our guitars on or whatever, and uh, and that's when it kind of starts hitting and kind of like building, and right. we're like you're kind of looking at each other, and you know we kind of hold each other accountable. Like okay, tonight's right. your night. Because I mean you know I've hung around with you off and on, Walter, and you're a totally different guy off stage <laughs> than you are on. Um, it's almost like you flip a switch and then it's it's go time. Yeah. Um, so I know you're a very creative guy too. You know, you're a producer, you're helping out other local acts um, and we'll talk about that as well. Um, but do you feel like, I'm trying to word the question in my mind. Um, as a creative person, do you feel like when you get on stage, that's your chance to kind of shine? Um, you know, honestly, not not so much like I'm one of those guys like I don't I don't ever get out there and just play by myself like I don't ever travel and play acoustic by right. myself or whatnot I don't think I could do what I do without the other guys that are around me um, and the loud you know rock guitars that are there so uh, for me I don't really ever see it as a time to shine it's just time to do my job right. you know I get up there and I'm there to entertain people and I have a job and if I don't do it, I make them look bad and you know, mm -hmm. vice versa. If they don't do their job, we look bad. And so we just get up there and we try to entertain people as much as possible and, and we enjoy it. So it probably cool. helps having one of the best guitarists around in your camp as well. I mean, yep. yeah, you right there, this guy, <laughs> the tired one. Uh, so, I mean, I would love to hear about some of your influences as a, as a guitar player. As a guitar player? Yeah. I mean, you know, the, just the obvious, that most everybody listened to back then, you know, like Steve Vai and your Ingbe and your Kirk Hammonds and I mean, pretty typical stuff. <clears throat> Is there that obscure one though? I mean, every guitarist has that one, that one person nobody's heard uh, of. Yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot. I'm a big Shredder fan. Okay. So all that Mike Barney stuff, I love all that, you know, Very cool. progressive rock, I love progressive rock. and. That's really a lot of my influences, but then you know, I love, God, I love CC Deville. You know, nice. like easy, simple stuff too. Yeah. So, yeah. You guys kind of feel like that's where your home is right now? It's progressive rock. Ooh, I um, don't know about no, that. no. Especially I, I, going forward in our the way our new stuff sounds. I think it's more for us, more about songwriting. Right. You know, like we don't. There's not a lot of. It's funny because his influences are shredders, but. Do a lot of shredding. Like, shred. there's not right. a lot of room for shredding in in, yeah. in uh, my songwriting. Stay at home. Yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so, I mean, it's really just it's more whatever serves the song. You know, some I, songs need some shredding, but I definitely agree with that too. I mean, because as somebody who's you know, I mean, we've gone to Clicks Live quite a few times. There's mm -hmm. a lot of great metal bands here in East Texas, but I mean, when Rocket Queen is on stage, there it's definitely a different vibe. I feel like it's more intimate. It's more involved. Um, yes. and a lot of bands around here. And I think that's kind of what separates you guys and, and kind of makes people take notice of Rocket Queen. Um, do you feel like uh, experience plays a big role in, in, in that process? Yeah, I think we've learned what not to do right. a lot. Um, I think that's our biggest lessons is is learning what to do, but also learning what not what doesn't work. Right. So yeah, a lot of experience. I mean, we've, we've played shows for years. I mean, since 2003, we... I think we only recorded our first record so we could go out and play shows. Right, I mean, that was just right. what we wanted to do. Um, so we did. We went out and and I think for the first four years we just played two, three nights a week, mm -hmm. every weekend. And I mean, it didn't matter what we got paid. We didn't get paid. It didn't matter. We just played. Just play. You have to play and perfect. And two people, 200 people, 300 people, right. no people, bartenders, just yeah. us. It didn't matter. We just wanted to play and that's what we did. So we got, we, we did hone a lot of our ability and our our performance skills that right. way and I mean you guys have made a huge name for yourselves in the last couple of years you know opening for Scott Sapp and I mean that's what's going on for you guys now I think you guys are fixing to leave on on your third tour with him right fourth fourth tour yeah um, but this is not the first time you guys have played nationally for big name folks mm -hmm. um, so I mean tell us about the first time you guys really got away from East Texas and kind of got to see the rest of the country um well I mean first tour was it was great like 
we just went out and, and I mean, so many things happened in one tour that usually happened in a whole span of a band's career. Right. And it all happened to us within like a month. Yeah. Before all that, week, all that cliche stuff. Weeks, oh, it was everything. just awful. It was like, <laughs> I mean, you, you know, everything, imagine. like every bit of, bit of trouble your, your equipment can have, your, your van can have, your trailer can have. Right. Stuff you didn't even think. Ice storms. Yeah. And blizzards and like. But yeah. you know what? And not one moment, not one moment, did we look at it and go, "This is not fun." Well, I know last year, I think you guys were. Maybe it was even Massachusetts, and maybe that's why I took notice of it. But I think you guys' van broke down, or something like that. Our van broke down. So <laughs> <many times. laughs> um, or the time the transmission fell out. Or oh my god! Had to get rebuilt. I mean, it started with a with a blowout in like the second day we were out. You know, it was just a trailer tire. And, yeah, know, that's what it was, yeah. The trailer tire in Florida, and, you know, trailer tire blew and blew up the the uh, yeah. fender. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> blew the fender off. We never saw it again. It's still missing. Um, it's somewhere in Florida. But, uh, so if you guys see that. their fender, it's probably worth some money. No, <laughs> just send it back to us so we can have it. So we can put it back on. Right. Yeah. So we'd rather have <laughs> a fender than a Gibson, right? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. We'd rather have a fender. Um, and it started with that, and then we went, I think we were in New York, we were going to New York, and uh, we stopped in the D.C. area, and our transmission dropped, and that's when we did a we did a Kickstarter campaign, or a GoFundMe campaign, and all of our fans yeah. and our friends and family amazingly stepped up and, and saved, literally saved our tour. And Rocket Queen fans are amazing, I gotta give a shout out to all of you guys out yes. there. Um, yeah, I mean, they're just huge a huge force for oh sure oh my gosh we would not i mean i know it's cliche but we would literally not be able to do what we do without right. them and speaking of fans I'll, I'll throw in this fan question real quick i forget who it was that asked me but somebody wanted to know what is the weirdest thing that a fan has ever approached you for or just the weirdest fan story you can you can tell man i mean that we can tell yeah <laughs> it's not oh, many <laughs> can't bring a bad league no can't bring a Babylon. Can't Oops. bring up. What did you do? Bring up Babylon. <laughs> See what happens when you bring up Babylon. Um, stuff that we can talk about. I mean, they, I mean, there's, there's not really a bunch that we can't talk about. That our fans are super awesome and super respectful. Right. Uh, we've had a few that that you know. Sometimes are there any like uh, weird stories about like the weirdest place somebody's asked you to sign your autograph? Honestly, most of us are pretty respectful. We all. We at one point or another have had relationships at home, and right. you know when that type of stuff is going on, we kind of we prefer to uh, not do anything that's silly. Right. So, and you know, we don't like to disrespect our fans. And, right. Right. And, so I mean, you guys have have been on national tours quite a few times mm -hmm. uh, over the years. Uh, tell us how you know being on national tour kind of differs from a local show. And what what are the differences between them? What do you like more about each one or whatever? What do you think? <laughs> I guess the audience, just like us, they don't know what to expect when they first see us. You know, yeah. They look at us and then they see us dressed up and they think we're, we're a metal band. Funny hair, you know, we're a metal band. Mm -hmm. And then once we start playing, they realize, oh, these guys rock, and mm -hmm. then they start reflecting the same energy that we're putting out to them. A lot, a lot of, of shocked faces when we first start first couple of notes there's a lot of like wide eyes and then about the middle or the towards the end of the first song a lot of people are there's more smiles like mm -hmm. oh i get it i understand yeah. it goes from who are these guys to why don't i know these guys hopefully yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's hopefully the goal. so yeah and then, i mean there's got to you guys got to feel some pressure especially probably on the first tour when you're opening for somebody of the status of somebody like scott stab and he's invited you guys to be his support. I mean, that's gotta be huge for y'all. You know, sure. I mean, yeah, it's it's awesome because like everybody in the Scott Stapp camp, uh, you know, we talk about our fans that, that really helped us get through the tour, but those guys were, I mean, no cliche and no pun intended, but they did welcome us with open arms and, right. and they, uh, they did so much to help us and, you know, just little things that they probably didn't even register with right. them, but really kind of, got us through um so there wasn't a whole lot of pressure that there was the only, the only pressure we really had was to make sure that we kind of held up our end of the bargain mm -hmm. you know we weren't going to miss any shows no matter what like even when our van went down we 
rented another van and borrowed equipment because we couldn't take our trailer. Right. And luckily, the venues had backline gear, and you know we just we didn't want to let anybody down, fans or you know Scott's camp. And plus, I think it, like we talked about a little earlier in the show. I mean, when the lights are on and you flip that switch from you know Walter Lee the guy to Walter Lee the front man, I mean, you have that experience behind you, so that professionalism is always there for you to kind of draw from right so it's like you know hey yeah i'm opening for scott staff but if i think about this too much and then people are not going to feel who i am it's just i mean i don't know about him but for me it's just second nature you yeah. know when we get up there we really just kind of do what we're supposed to do and what we enjoy to do it's like none of it's an act none of it's you know none of it's premeditated like a lot of people assume that we kind of stand in front of a mirror in our rehearsal room and we're like all right now here you do this and wait y'all do don't this. do that we don't <laughs> we'd probably be a lot better if we did but <laughs> but no i mean it's just second nature that's kind of how we grew up you know you know, like I said, we we were in the band for a long time before he joined the band, but we didn't have to teach him how to play in this band. Like he he jumped in and did exactly what he normally does. Right. So you and know, I mean, you guys it. have been asked back for the fourth time with with, with Sky. And I, I mean, that's that's gonna be it's just gonna feel good, like vindication for your craft and what you guys do. Um, not twice, but four times to be on that tour with him. They've been really good to us. Like I said, they're they're probably one of the best best family oriented rock bands that are out there yeah, or touring completely acts. Completely agree with you. Know? Yeah. So And he seems like a, he'd be a really down to earth kind of kind of oh, cat as well. Awesome. Really is. Yeah. I think the first thing that he's like I said, the first thing that when I said hi to him, the first thing he did was hug me. So Wow. You know, you don't think Scott Stapp's gonna be the first guy to That's hug you in the room, cool. but yeah, yeah that's kinda cool. Scott Stapp is a hugger. Very cool. <laughs> Not to everyone. <laughs> we'll just go hug him the man and tell him I told you to. <laughs> Yeah, please, no um, restraining orders with Walter <laughs> Lee's name, but Walter told me to. Right. Said it was okay. Hey y'all, Boston Chris here with the ETX Rock Show. And did you know your commercial for your band, venue, or local business, or national business could have been right here where I'm talking. For the low cost of only $200 a month, you can have your professionally filmed commercial right here where we're talking. Plus, 20% of all advertising dollars spent here on the ETX Rock Show goes to a local East Texas charity. Whether it's a homeless mission, or military, or cancer, or kids, we will be giving 20% of all of our advertising money directly to a locally based charity. In addition to your commercial, all advertisers will receive identity tagging on all social media platforms, including our Twitter, our Facebook, and our Instagram. And this is for the life of the show. That means anytime we re-promote an episode, which is very often, you will receive that same identity tagging, whether it's three years from now or a month from now. Our social media has grown rapidly over the last few months. Guys, in April 2017 alone, we connected with over 140,000 people between our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. That means that is a whole new audience for you and your business to reach. So jump in with the ETX Rock Show today. Advertise with us and 20% goes to local business, uh, local charities. And all you have to do is contact us at etxrocks at gmail.com. Thank you, and here is the rest of this awesome episode. Hey guys, we're Black Tie Mojo, and thank you for tuning in to ETX Rocks. So I would love, uh, you know, like I said earlier, the band's been around for 14 years, so I imagine that the sound has changed over the years, and certain, um, uh, for one thing, I mean, I, I love some of the grittiness in the band, and uh, I've, I've found that that wasn't really there early on, and it's kind of grown over time. I mean, like I said, if you listen to I Hate You, you, you really hear this grittiness that really comes from the 80s. So I would love for you to describe kind of the evolution of the sound of the band over the years. Wow, that's a long time. Um, well, I, uh, I learned how to sing a little bit later on in the band. Um, so the, that always helps. It does. It does. Yeah. Well, I mean, really it's funny because like I said, it's, it's been since 2003. So we kind of grew up a lot you right. know, during the writing processes of, uh, each record. And uh, a friend of mine told me one time, and I, I really appreciated it. He was like, every record you put out, it seems like a totally different record than the last record. And it's like it's a constant evolution and and I respect that and I like that you know because we I don't want to ever release the same record again absolutely you know that just means that I haven't grown as a musician or a songwriter or a or a anything right you know so you know the first record was a lot more a lot younger a lot more youthful a lot poppier and we were still trying to figure out uh, 
um, how to do what we did uh, or how to do what we wanted to do, how to get it out of our heads onto a CD. Yeah. Um, and back then technology wasn't as available. So, I mean, we, as we used a lot of Pro Tools, but we didn't have a lot of the programs that a lot of the kids and, and the musicians now have right. made available to themselves. Uh, so we did that, and then I think the second record, well, in between that, we did the John Tucker Must Die soundtrack, right. and uh, that was a clear evolution of a, you know, going more into a poppier side. That had to be a huge step for y'all, too, it was to awesome. kind of get that national notice, even briefly. Yeah, 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 it was great. We didn't, uh, our guitar player, Chris, at the time, entered us in a contest, and then kind of said, all right, well, whatever, mm -hmm. turned it off, and Kind of we walked away. About it. Totally free. I don't even yeah. think he told us about it. He was wow. just like, "Yeah, I just entered it in. No big deal." And uh, <laughs> then they called him and they were like, "Hey, you're you're one of the 10, 20 finalists or something." And next week we'll announce the top three, and then they'll vote. And you guys will win. And next week they called him and was like, "Hey, you won the whole thing. You know, no semifinals, wow. no nothing. You just won the whole thing." And we were like, "Wow!" So, you know, we did that. It was great, and uh, you know, it came out in the movie. Um, and then we immediately started working on our next EP and nice. had this huge evolution and that's when we started learning how to record and produce our own our own records so we got to spend a lot more time and I invested a lot into uh, into studio equipment and, and we recorded our, our that record by ourselves and spent so much time on it and it came out really good and, uh, it's poppy it didn't have that aggression yet. yeah yeah and That's then, a good word, aggression. Yeah, yeah, yeah for was, sure. We got older and angrier. You yeah, know? yeah. Bills started coming in, and we were like, oh, "This is not fun." <laughs> man, we're not doing these <laughs> things, man. This is awful. No, but uh, so we worked on the next record after Kiss and Tell. We worked on Good Night California for a little while, and it got much more aggressive. And we had a bunch of songs, and we spent a lot of time narrowing it down. And right. you know, we got the ones that we liked, and then you know, we did a self-release of that record for a little while, for a couple months, and then shut it down and. When we picked up with Fade to Silence Records and uh, Paul, mm -hmm. we decided to re-release it and put a couple extra songs on it that we hadn't yeah. finished at the time, and uh, we put that out in 2015. And Paul's stamp on it was was pretty apparent too, I think. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, Paul's just a genius in my opinion. Yeah. He's been around a long time. He knows a lot of people. Knows what works and what doesn't, like we talked about earlier. Sure. Sure. Um, but with this record, it, now I, I've been reading a little bit up on you, uh, and I know that you guys have recorded in Nashville, Texas, and LA. Was that all with this record, or uh, no? Uh, for the for the new record or for this record? For this one. This record, I recorded it with uh, me and our old guitar player Chris did the original four tracks that are on it, okay. and uh, the other ones was a mixture of uh, me and Zach did one. Uh, I did one by myself, and I think that's it. So mixture of me and Chris doing them here in Tyler, and uh, me and Zach doing them in Nashville, yeah. in Tyler. And uh, I would not have thought of Rocket Queen as recording in Nashville. Love it. Love was, Nashville. Yeah? Nashville's like yeah. my favorite place. Do you feel like, uh, I mean, obviously more music than this country comes out of there, but I mean, of course. do you feel like there's a different kind of vibe with the rock music that comes out of Nashville than here in Texas. I like it because it's a lot more thought out and it's a lot more songwriter-ish and I, I've right. always loved that side of country music, the songwriter more aspect. More polished. Yes, music. very polished, yeah. very polished. Um, I've always been the guy that gravitates towards the hits on, on a record. Yeah. And I'm not the deep cut guy. And that's me. Yeah, deep cut guy. and I am very unapologetic about it. I'm, yeah. If I'm gonna cover somebody's song, it's probably gonna be the, the one that you know. The, the big one. Yeah, yeah, yeah just because that's what I like, that's what I gravitate. But in Nashville, that you get a lot of that. And thankfully, we had already slated to start recording in Nashville, and our drummer at the time had a uh, an emergency surgery come up and he couldn't, he couldn't record. Right. So luckily, a friend of mine lived in Nashville, and I just called him up, and he, uh, he tours with Jason Aldean as his drummer, his name's Rich Redmond. And wow. He was available and he was like, yeah, man, I'll do it, totally do it. And he came down and just knocked it out of the park. So luckily we were in Nashville because you can do stuff like that. You can call right. a buddy and he'll come down and record it that day. Nashville just sounds fun in that aspect, especially with a lot of the songwriter rounds and the creativity oh, yeah. that flows there. 
and, and I mean that polish that's a good word for it uh, of what comes out of uh, Tennessee as opposed to Texas I mean we have great songwriters here especially in East oh, Texas yes um, but you know sometimes that polish isn't there um, and I think that might be because there's so so much fewer songwriters here in Texas than well I think there's a thing to be said about having a polished record but not having a polished record doesn't mean that it's not as good because well, sometimes totally when it's different. not polished it's more intimate too. yeah absolutely yeah. I, I, and a lot of people do that on purpose it's not because mm -hmm. they don't know how to write or, or record a polished record it's because that gives a certain feel you right. know um, Nirvana's second record or third record in uh, in utero after Nevermind yeah. they did that on purpose right you know um, so it just well sometimes you've got to find that, that different sound too I mean just to make yourself different Make right. yourself unique and stand out, um, and I think that's probably a big reason why you formed the band in '03 was to absolutely kind of fill that vacuum of what was missing. Hundred percent. I think you're doing that uh, even now. I mean, uh, in 2017, I mean, you guys call yourself a rock band. Yep. You're not progressive rock. Either. That's why I shot you that question earlier. I wanted to see your reaction to it. Um, because everything I read on you guys, it's we're a rock band, we're a rock band, we're a rock band. And if you listen to this record, it's different kinds of rock throughout yeah. the whole record. Um, so, I mean, when you're writing a song, and I'm assuming that, you know, you guys are writing um, collaboratively, you know, all of you guys are adding your own pieces to it. Yeah. Um, but when you're kind of putting the record together, are you, is, is there a strategy in mind for, you know, what goes where and, and should we write something that'll fill this space, et cetera? It's weird because I don't think it's intentional, but a lot of times we'll write a bunch of songs and then we're like, well, we need a fast song, we need an upbeat song, we need more up-tempo music, or we need more ballads, or we need more mid-tempos. And I think we kind of think of it like a live show. Mm -hmm. Like We need that song that's gonna open up yeah. the set, yep. you know? Um, or open up the record, or close the record. Like I think we have a song now that's gonna be on the new one that has a great outro that we just, for some reason, I think we all know that's going to close the record. Whether it does, it does. It may not. Right. But, uh, I, you know, I think that's kind of how we think about it. Mm -hmm. so. Another thing I really, um, uh, really impressed by Rocket Queen is you guys are not afraid of the ballad. No. And I think I think a lot of rock <laughs> bands today. The ballad. I think a lot of rock bands are missing out on uh, on the classic rock ballad that really created our childhood. You know, I yeah, think we're right. all pretty much right around the same age. You know. I mean, let's talk about a band that you guys, I hope you guys know, White Lion, uh, When the Children Cry. Do you oh, remember that song? It's an amazing song. Just these rock ballads that don't exist anymore. And no. Why do you think they don't exist anymore? Well, I think they got so overdone in the 80s, and when people were like, I'm done with the 80s, they mm -hmm. automatically lumped that in. But there's a lot of ballads out there. There really is. There's a yeah. lot of ballads and, and a lot of records that just, you just got to find them. Yeah. You know? Well, we shouldn't have to. No, you know, I mean, it's unfortunate, but um, it's great that you guys are keeping that that kind of that recipe that used to work a lot because I think it can work again. Yeah. Um, of course, you guys aren't known as a ballad band, so I don't want people to get that uh, that that you know that perception. It's just that's what I love about like the acoustic song on the record that right. we talked about before we were filming. I love the song just because of the intimacy of it, and I can't wait to hear the full full band yeah. version of it because yeah. I'm, I'm curious how that'll translate with all that extra sound in there um but uh, i would love to hear about your songwriting process when when you're i mean do you sit like set aside time to write or does it just hit you like a lot of songwriters i think it just kind of strikes yeah whenever it whenever it comes uh, sometimes it'll start with an idea sometimes it'll just start with like noodling around a lot of times we'll be at rehearsal going through set songs and I'll play something and I immediately have to put my phone down and hit record and just record it so I, when I get back to the house I can I can think about it a little bit right. more um, and I won't forget it because if I don't I'll, it'll be gone right um, but you know it just kind of kind of depends on you know uh, some things just come like that and then some things you're working on for a year and a half and it's still not done and then something just clicks and then it's and like then hey that clicks this song is where I can put that yep yeah and you totally like ding, I get that's it. That's awesome, man. I love picking the brain of, of songwriters and creators, and it's just that's part of my like favorite thing I get to do with the yeah. show is kind of show people out there the process 
of turning something from nothing. I mean, it's it's just amazing the process, and everybody does it differently too. Which of is course, super cool, you know. Of course. Um, the last thing I really want to talk about is um, Walter is a, a pretty a big a pretty big icon for rock music in East Texas. He's, he's what? He's mentored a lot of the younger bands and helped with producing and getting their name out there. Um, so I mean, I would love to know uh, how important is it that your role in, in mentoring a band like Panic Device, who, you, who you're working with, and, and there have been other bands as well that you've produced. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us why that's so important for you to kind of pay it forward. You know, it's not like a conscious decision uh, to do anything specific. It's just when you're in a scene and you're actually a part of the scene and you're not just there to take, mm -hmm. you want to give back. Right. Um, you find yourself doing anything that you can, you know, whatever your skills are that you can offer to somebody, whether it be advice or just, you know, hitting a record button or, you know, getting them through a hurdle that you've already been through. Right. Uh, and I think that for me, the best way to do it is to help with what I'm good at and that's songwriting and, and recording and, and, you know, letting them know what not to do. Mm -hmm. uh, but nobody has all the answers, so you know I learn from those guys as much as they learn from me. Right. Um, so I mean, it's just really about that. You just you kind of become friends with people, and you want to help your friends out. Right. You know, and that's that's it's as simple as as I can make it. You you just want to do what you can. Right. And the reason why I wanted to ask that question, <clears throat> and I wanted to bring this up because I don't I don't think you know about it, but um, when you guys came back to Tyler after uh, I think it was a summer tour last year, and you came back, and we talked at the studio in Bullard yeah. about your comeback show at, at, at Clicks. Um, you know, you guys were headlining and you had, ever since December, the mm -hmm. Cruise of Sanity and Panic Device opening yes. for y'all. And when you guys hit that stage, I've never seen anything like this in my life. I watched every single member of every band that opened for y'all, literally standing in a line watching y'all. Oh, wow. And so I went over there and I talked to one of them. I'm not going to tell you who it is, and, but you might be able to guess. Okay. And I said, hey, man, what what's going on here? And they were like, these are the guys that have made it out of here. So we're all watching to see what we can do better so we can get out of here. Wow. <laughs> and I was like, man, there's no greater testament than what I just heard this musician tell me about this band. And I mean, I was blown away from, from the moment you guys got up there, just that energy and the showmanship. And I, I use that word a lot with you because you are the, the ultimate showman to me. Um, around here. I, I, I haven't seen any better, is what Thank I'm you. trying to say. Thank so you. when I see your your peers standing like that, really focusing on trying to get better themselves, I, I don't think there's a big a bigger compliment than that. And I wanted you to know that that happened that night. That's awesome. I appreciate it. That's No problem. Whoever said it. Thanks. <laughs> His initials might be TN. 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 Oh, no. Never find that. Never figure it out. <laughs> but, you know, to be honest, they're... Uh, as cliche as it sounds, I mean, I learn from everybody in the scene. Right. You know, I watch as many people as I can, and somebody's going to do something that either impresses me or, you know, sparks inspires an idea you. or inspires me. It's just, you know, you, you don't get unless you're at those live shows. I mean, right. you're just not going to get it sitting at the house. Well, you can't you get know? experience sitting on your couch. Nope. That's, not that's at all. just the way it is. All right, so we are going to play a game with Rocket Queen. We have Walter and Jay from Rocket mm -hmm. Queen sitting in on the set of the ETX Rock Show. That's and this is called, Man. this is called Would You Rather. Oh. And all this is is just 10 random Would You Rather situations. And I have not looked at these. These are completely okay. random on an app. So <laughs> we will choose one and then it'll give us another one and another one and another one. All right. So just first thing that pops in your head, you have to choose one or the other. And it can't be neither. Okay, can all it right. be both? No. So this is Would You Rather with Walter Lee and Jay from Rocket. Would you rather be a wizard or be a ninja? Oh, that's oh, easy. How is that easy? <laughs> we should have used that picture. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um, man. Okay. I'd rather be a ninja. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with ninja. I gotta go with ninja. Alright. No, that was a hard one. Would you rather hear the good news first or hear the bad news Whoa. first? Ooh. Bad news. Bad news. Or... Would you rather permanently have wet hair or have absolutely no body hair? I'd rather have no body hair. 
Right. Yeah. yeah. Right, would you rather go on a magic carpet ride with Jasmine or take Cinderella to the ball? What'd you rather do? <laughs> <laughs> Keep in mind, Magic you're only going to get a half a date with Cinderella because at midnight everything changes. Oh. Well, then I think that'd be the perfect date. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Number, what is this, five already? Four? I we'll go no, four. Would you rather have a dog as a pet or have a cat as a pet? Dog. Man. No, dog. it's dog or cat, not man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my cat's going to hate me, but dog. <laughs> It's going to hate you. Cat, turn away. All right, number five. Sorry, Lyndon. Number five. Would you rather answer yes to every question or answer no to every question? No. All right. Sure. Number six. <laughs> now they're thinking of questions that they would rather have answer yes to. All right, number six. If I can get, all right. Would you rather lose your sense of taste or lose your sense of humor? Taste. Uh, that's tough. Taste. Okay. Food's good. Yeah, I know, but I'd lose a lot of weight. That's, that's <laughs> true. Good point. All right, number seven. Would you rather Employees sweat blood? Not make sense. No, exactly. Would you rather sweat blood or sweat milk? That's just weird. Mm. Blood? Because milk smells funny. I'd have, to go, I'd have to go with blood because that's just more metal. That is true. That is true. Number eight. Would you rather be a main character in The Simpsons? Or a main character in Family Guy? Simpsons. Family Guy. Okay. Number eight, would you rather be given a new car every year or given a new house every 10 years? Ooh. House. House. That's what I would take too, I think. Resale. Number nine, would you rather murder billions of people via virus for the sake of the planet or not be at fault for killing anyone but let the planet die? <laughs> I'd, have to, I'd have to pull the hard choice and murder. I don't want to, but I'd have to. Yep. It's like, y'all yeah, gotta go. Uh, yeah. I'm sure some of you suck anyways. So. That'd be, you'd probably get a really good music video out of that, too, probably. Probably so. Yeah. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> it's all of you. All right, last Sorry. one. Would you rather always have to say what's on your mind or never speak I again? <laughs> I think I already do not going to speak again, ever. <laughs> You're just not going to speak again? Never. Which isn't too hard. No. Nah. <laughs> um, oh, man, I think I'd have to not speak again. Okay. Kill first day? Yeah, of course me. <laughs> Kill oh, first, first day. Dead first, first day. No. <laughs> that would be like last? a bad like credibility problem, too, because like if you just murdered a million people and nobody you know messed with you and then all of a sudden somebody killed you just because you said something wrong. Right. That would be a bummer. That would make all of those million people feel like, what the heck, man? Right. You know? Yeah. Oh, bummer. It would. So that was what, that was Would You Rather with Rocket Queen. Uh, that was a lot of fun, uh, especially the milk and blood. They both smell, by the way, Jay. Come on. Smell <laughs> of milk. But blood smells like copper. It does. At least milk smells like food. So you guys smell weird things. Maybe so. So, um, where can folks, uh, I guess, first question is, when can we expect new music from Rock and Queen? Soon, as soon as possible. We don't really have a hard street date or even a soft street date, but we are working on it. Um, being the creative guys that we are, it's never good enough. Uh, so... And you guys have demand and fans, too. Yeah, I mean, we don't want to let people... We may release one song sooner than later, and while we're finishing the rest of the record, but we really haven't decided yet. Right. So, um, hopefully soon. Cool. And uh, where can folks find the music that you guys already have released? Where's the best place? Where would you send folks to? If you're going to download it, download it from iTunes. Yeah. Um, we're building a new site as we speak, so uh, we'll have everything on our site. Okay. Um, Facebook, our Facebook is always live, so yeah, we've always got something going on. And uh, is the website, can folks still go there? That's rocketqueen. Uh, Rocketqueen.net, it's yeah. currently under construction right okay. now. But uh, if you want to head to the Facebook, then uh, you can get it there. Cool. So um, they're under construction, and the last one we did was under maintenance. So that's a different group of people. Yeah, different guys. <laughs> 
Uh, and your social media, I know you, you mentioned Facebook. You also have Twitter and, and Instagram. Twitter, and all that Instagram, stuff. Facebook. Um, I think that's it. That's it. Oh, YouTube. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, all YouTube. That. And, and you guys, yeah. if you're checking them out on YouTube, make sure you're checking out I Hate You, an uh, incredible video. Uh, make sure you've got coffee in you when you watch that video because your blood is going to pump really, really cool. Nice. Um, it's got that aggressive late 80s, like, mm, I love the song. Um, for somebody that ha has gone through divorce, it's a great song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Uh, let me send this to my ex. Um, all right, so y'all have been watching another episode of Behind the Music with Boss and Chris, only found here on the ETX Rock Show. First of all, I mean, we want to thank Rock Queen for coming all the way out here and spending some time with us today. Thank you for having me. And telling your story and your process. I think I think your fans will really be interested in that. And, I mean, we, so we appreciate your time. Uh, we also want to thank our, our friends over in mobile audio and video production for um, filming and recording all the audio for this. Make sure you're checking them out at uh, mobileaudiolabs.com or on Facebook at Mobile Audio and Video Productions. Um, also, you guys, if you're watching for the first time, you can check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at ETX Rocks. Um, we're also on YouTube, iTunes, all of those places. If you're listening on iTunes, please rate and review us. Uh, that'll help us a lot. Um, and as we always say on this show, we want to thank y'all for supporting local music. And don't ever forget, East Texas, East Texas Rocks. Hey guys, I'm Katie Lynn, and make sure to tune in to ETX Rocks with Boston Chris, Darren Watson, ETX Rocks, ETX Rocks, Alan Fox Band. Hey guys, we're the Morning Madhouse. I'm Carter. I'm Brandon. I'm Ginger. It's the best podcast ever made mm -hmm. in all of history. Hi, this is Paul Bebo, and I ETX Rocks with Boston Chris Barnes. You're gonna love it. ETX Rocks. Hey, East Texas, DP here. ETX Rocks. Hey, East Texas, we're Enduring House, a Christian rock band. ETX Rocks! Hey, this is Monty Pittman from ETX Rocks. Hey, East Texas, Jaden Farnsworth, ETX Rocks. Hey, everybody, I'm David McCarty with the Gypsy Creek Band. As always, ETX Rocks. Hey guys, this is Chris Colston. Thanks for tuning in to the ETX Rock Show. The ETX Rock Show. The ETX Rock Show. Ho! Hey folks, I'm WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan. And I just want to make sure you support local music. Hi East Texas, this is Chris Wayne. And Crystal Clark with KYKX 105.7 ETX Rocks. Hey, hey East, East Texas, Texas. we're Lady Chaz and the Tramps. And just remember, ETX Rocks. Hey, this is Todd Freeman from ETX Rocks with Boston Prince. Hey, East Texas, I'm Waylon Hicks. And remember, ETX Rocks. Hey, what's going on, guys? This is the one and only SP and Mexicano con estilo. Make sure to support your local music and ETX Rocks. Hello. 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 We're one way. Always remember, ETX Rocks! Howdy folks, this is Aaron Watson. Support local music and ETX Rocks. Hey, this is Chris Colston. Make sure you support local music and ETX Rocks. Hey, this is Hannah Kirby. Thanks for tuning in to the ETX Rocks show. Tough guy, ho! Covering music-related content of all genres, if it filters through Eastern Texas, it's fair game. Y'all bring it. From Texas, Canada down to the coast, and Dallas down to Houston, and everything in between, we are ETX Ross. Hit the brakes. Cut.